Hey, everybody, we're going to cover the results of the South Carolina Republican primary where Donald Trump scored a 20 point margin of victory. Also have a second video in a few hours, so be sure to check that one out. So let's see what happened in the Palmetto State. Here's the results. Donald Trump had just barely got under 60% of the vote. He's at 59.8. Nikki Haley at 39 and a half. So Trump claims 44 delegates. I've also heard that Haley ends up coming out with a few. Either way, let's take a look at this county map. They're pretty much all red for Trump except three of them. The one with the most votes was Greenville. Trump got 57%. Most of the other counties are deep red where Trump easily hits over 70% of the vote. But this apparently was an open primary. And since there wasn't really much happening on the Democratic side, theoretically some independents and Democrats could have crossed over and supported Haley. She won Richland County convincingly. She got 58% of the vote. Along the coast, she also got Charleston. She won that by 24 points with 62% of the vote. And the other county in the Southwest, Beaufort County, she got 55% of the vote. That's a county that in the general election, Donald Trump won last time by 10 points. So that's really the only county of note. If you want to look at the table of every county, you can go down here and sort by total votes. If you go down farther, you can see that the counties that have less population are where Trump really runs up the margin. Down lower, you've got the needle and the vote estimates. So Trump with a clean sweep in all the primaries so far, and I had a recent community poll out that asked what Trump is going to get in this primary. If you don't round it, it turns out he got under 60% of the vote. If you do round it, then he hits 60. So in one sense, it seems like a small underperformance for Trump. But if we get on Real Clear Politics and take a look at the average of the recent polls, there Trump was at 60.8, Haley at 37.5. So that's maybe a one-point overestimation for Trump and a two-point underestimation for Haley, three points in total of a miss. It's really not that bad considering it's a primary. Primaries usually have a wider range of expectations. The final poll from Trafalgar actually looks like it was almost spot on, 59 to 38. Down here in the graph, it looked like in the final few days, Trump's support was starting to dwindle just a little bit, but in the end, it technically wasn't even close, and the polling seemed like it was close enough. So let's get on to NBC and take a look at the exit polling. Again, you've got to keep in mind that there could be independents and Democrats that crossed over and supported Haley. So let's go down a little bit and take a look at some of this data. Trump wins all the GOP groups. Very conservative was his best with 85% of the vote. Haley won voters that identify as moderate or liberal with 72%. Trump got 27, but they only make up one-fifth of that primary. And Haley also won independent independence by 19 points, they also make up about a fifth of the electorate. Haley also won 81% of voters that believe President Biden legitimately won the 2020 election. How about with education? Haley did win college graduates by three points, and that's a group that she's expected to do better with. With the top issues for the state, 37% said immigration was the top issue. Of those, Trump won 82% to Haley's 18. 33% said the economy was the top issue. Trump also won those 64 to 36. Just like she did in New Hampshire, Haley won voters that said foreign policy or abortion was their top issue. And the last one here shows that voters were pretty much locked in on who they're going to support in this primary. Only 8% say they decided within the past week. So it's another win for Trump. This was Haley's home state. If she can't win here, it doesn't look like she's going to be able to win anywhere. She did worse in her home state than she did in New Hampshire. Again, with the open primaries and a lack of competition on the Democratic side, the takeaways might be a little harder to pull out. So Trump is going to be going full steam ahead into Super Tuesday. In his victory speech, he apparently brought Lindsey Graham on stage, and Graham received boos from the crowd. There's a long history between Trump and Graham going at it. The base does not like Graham at all, so I do think this is stereotypical politics. All you gotta do is bring somebody on the stage that you might be weak with demographic-wise, and with Trump bringing on Graham, that's gonna try to signal his support for moderates or independents, maybe suburban voters in the establishment. It's likely that once Haley is done, her and Trump would patch things up real quick. But what does Haley do from here? Well, she vows to continue. Super Tuesday is less than a couple weeks away. There's a ton of action on that day. I suppose if you're Haley, you might as well stick around just to see what happens. But without being cruel about it, it is completely embarrassing that she lost her home state by 20 points. Even if she thinks she outperformed the polls by a few points, and there might be a segment of the population that wants an alternative to Trump, the counter evidence just outweighs that so significantly. But a 20-point win is really not that close. There's other primaries in other years where candidates might lose by only a few points and they still drop out. But I get it. Haley does have to try to come up with some kind of narrative for why she's staying in this race. She's not going to come out and say she has no chance.
chance she's gonna see what happens in a couple of weeks. Maybe she even stays in after that. She might be hoping something dramatic happens with Trump and he ends up not being the nominee. But if we take a look at the delegate tracker, Trump is at 107, Haley is at 17. And remember the convention is in Milwaukee in mid-July. So that's kind of where things are at. Super Tuesday is March 5th. The plan for that day is to do a live stream. There's gonna be a lot more to follow than just one state. And so far there really hasn't been any upsets in this primary, both on the Democratic side and the Republican side. Everything is more or less just playing out as expected. It's tough to say for sure who would be stronger in the general election. Some polls have shown Haley is better than Trump against Biden. I have seen some that show she's not stronger, especially in certain specific states. Trump has a ton of baggage. It is a roll of the dice. But I also think it's a roll of the dice with Haley. If she were the nominee, then I think the scrutiny on her would go way up. Then who knows if the storyline of her being more moderate would cost her with Republican voters, or she would make up for it with independents and maybe a few Democrats. We're also going to be waiting to see who Trump picks as his running mate. We're going to follow it. We'll see what happens. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about these South Carolina results? At what point do you think Haley is going to call it quits? And could anything change over the next couple weeks? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.